My name is Rick Astley and this video is about swapping out incandescent or filament lamps as they're sometimes called for LEDs in order to prevent a rear end collision with your car. This car is a 2004 Jaguar XK8 and it has as its stop tail lamp a regular uh, two filament 1157 lamp with a so-called 21 slash 5 watt stop tail lamp in fact the stop these days is more like 26 watts and the tail light is about 8 watts but they continue to call them 21 fives changing this particular bulb for an led doesn't happen to be very easy on this car because an led would take uh, somewhere between a tenth and a twentieth of the current of the regular lamp and the car has a lamp outage detection system for all essential lamps and it would interpret the lower current of the LED as being one of the filaments in the in that light being out and throw up an error code on the dash which is a nuisance and um, in order to get around that you need to put resistors in with equivalent resistance to the lamps and it an equivalent wattage and a 25 watt resistor the one that replaces the stop lamp is a pretty big device and it also needs a smaller one for the uh, for the 5 or 8 watt um, tail lamp too so it wasn't actually very practical in this case like a lot of European cars this car has high intensity fog lights at the back and those lights aren't considered essential and so the car does not have a detection system for um, low current in the event that a filament is out and I can therefore put an LED into that position in, in place of the regular 1156 fog lamp which is normally operated from the dash by the way and uh, in this case I put uh, a Philips type in there. The LED I selected was this Philips 1156. It's not the most inexpensive LED but uh, you'll notice that the LEDs face backwards and they allow it to take full advantage of the multifaceted reflectors on this car which are extremely efficient. I'll go into more details about how I made the connection between the regular stop lamp and the LED fog lamp in a video especially for Jaguar owners and perhaps other European car owners but fundamentally I put a diode in between the stop lamp connection and the fog lamp connection so that when the stop lamp came on current could flow to the fog lamp but if I were to put the fog lamp on and I live in North America and I never do but if I did current could not flow back from the fog lamp to the stop lamp. The result is that I have a fairly unusual situation in that my bright lamps are a mix of both an LED and a regular filament lamp and when I took a video of this I could see very quickly that the LED was switching on much faster than the incandescent lamps and switching off much faster too because the incandescent lamps had to cool down. So the question then was how much faster do the LEDs turn on than the filament or incandescent lamps and what difference does that make to the car as regards a driver following who has to put on the brakes and uh, how much more quickly do they see the LED than they would the incandescent lamps. The video you just saw was actually taken in slow motion at 120 frames per second instead of about 30 and with that I was able to inspect the video frame by frame and see when each light came on. The LED actually comes on in about a millionth of a second so even in slow motion in one frame it's not on and in the next frame it's fully on. The filament lamp however has to heat up to about four and a half thousand Fahrenheit or two and a half thousand Celsius and so you can see it takes time both to warm up and to cool down. I'm able to very accurately measure the time between each frame and so I marked the first frame 
where the LED came on to t equals zero seconds and then looked for the first visible sign that the filament lamp was on. That turns out to be at 0 0.13 seconds, which at 60 miles an hour equates to about 11 and a half feet. So a driver following who saw the LED would have already started braking and have an 11 and a half foot advantage over someone following who saw the incandescent lamp instead. Running the video frame by frame, it was about here at 0.21 seconds after the LED had come on that I judged the following driver could reasonably be expected to see the incandescent light, the filament light on the right, and apply the brake. Again, looking at it frame by frame, I tried to determine when the incandescent filament lamp had reached its peak brightness, and that appeared to be about 0.56, just over half a second after the LED had come on. I determined the time when I thought a following driver might see the filament lamp come on after watching the video several times, but others may make a different judgment from me. Again, that time that I decided was 0.21 seconds, and here you can see still images alternating between the filament lamp being off and its brightness at 0.21 of a second. At night the situation is a little different in that the incandescent filament light is already on and that, so instead of looking for a light coming on we're looking for a change in the intensity of that light in order to start braking. Again I marked the frame when the LED came on as t equals zero seconds. The center light and right light are of course on because they're the vehicle tail lights that are normally on at night. The point at which I judged a driver following might notice that the regular stop light had come on was much harder to judge here but surprisingly it seemed to be around the same time as before so I marked it up at 0.21 seconds as well. And this is that regular stop light at full brightness. Again, these stills alternate between the regular stop lamp being off and its brightness at 0.21 of a second. So what does all that mean? Let's take the situation where the white car has LED lights and brakes hard and the following driver just manages to stop within a hair's breadth of the white car. In the middle diagram, we're looking at the situation at 30 miles an hour. Everything is exactly the same as in the top diagram except that the white car has incandescent lamps and so the blue car now breaks 0.2 of a second later and it would certainly collide with the white car because given free space it would move another 8 foot and 10 inches before stopping. In the bottom diagram we're considering the situation at 60 miles an hour. Again everything's the same as in the top diagram apart from the fact that the white car has incandescent or filament brake lamps and once again the blue car starts to brake 0.2 of a second later than it would had the white car had LED brake lights but in this case given free space the blue car would move another 17 foot 7 more than a car's length and there would be a major collision. Another way of looking at this is graphically and here we see the advantage that a following driver would have given an extra 0.2 of a second by seeing LED lamps instead of incandescent lamps on the left in imperial dimensions and on the right in metric dimensions. In the chart on the left, at 50 miles an hour, the braking distance is shortened by about 15 feet because of the 0.2 second advantage the following driver gets because he observes LED lights on the right, we've taken a similar speed of 80 kilometers per hour, and that gives four and a half meters advantage. In conclusion, I think I can say that installing LED stop lamps in place of filament lamps considerably reduces the risk of being rear-ended by another vehicle.